So we got that one rolling, we got this one rolling. So are you kind of like a fist bump guy or a high five kind of guy? I'm a high five. All right. Generally. Ooh. What's yeah. your name? Uh, Andrew Coleman. Andrew Coleman. People call you Andy? <laughs> Generally, yeah, but I don't. I don't uh, correct them when they say Andrew. Just okay. no, no, Drew. Drew's no. Not. Drew, Drew's Drew, out. Drew's out. Yeah. So speaking of Drew, if I if I called you Drew, <laughs> would you get mad? What if I wanted to call you Drew? No, I I would just correct you. You would just correct me. unless you persisted, okay. and then I might. <laughs> okay. So here's this question for you: uh, Do you do you do you? Is this like a, a special program or something? Uh, well, you know how like people say, "Hey, that's your opinion, man. Like, go for it. You do you." But like, my opinion or my okay. truth is a little bit different. So that's cool. Right. Well, I think that's good to a certain extent. I mean, you know, I, you need to give people space to be themselves or whatever. Sure. But at the same time, there are certain objective truths to reality that that um, I think are beyond us. But but yeah, but I try to let people be themselves. Like so, I'll let you do you, and I'll do me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if what if what I'm doing is in complete no blatant contrast to what you want to happen? Well, I, I think we should have a dialogue. It's like, well, why why do you think that? Isn't it better to just ghost you and like never talk to you again, and then we can just live our own truths without ever like interacting ever no, again? No, I, I don't think that's a good thing because uh, I, I'm looking at what's happening in our society today. We're becoming very polarized, very tribalistic, mm -hmm. and that is, is not good. I mean, the, the, the level of public discourse is becoming more and more shrill, and people hate each other, and if it continues on this trend, eventually we're going to have a civil war, so I, I don't think wow. I don't think that's a good thing. So. So how do you answer the tough questions of life? Well, I'm a Christian. My fundamental presuppositions What does that are, mean? That's, that's a big oh, word. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, so basically those things that I assume about life and about reality that can't really be um, proved based on other assumptions. Okay. Um, it's those very, very basic assumptions that you believe, you know, without without proof that you assume to be to be the case. Now you can have. I'm not saying you don't have evidence for those things. I'm not saying that they are not consistent with other things. But at the begin at the end of the day, you, you have to make certain assumptions about life. You know, and a, a lot of times I'll be maybe dialoguing or debating debating with somebody, and. I'll realize we're not getting anywhere because our fundamental assumptions about life are different. So you come at the deep questions of life through kind of the lens or the worldview, if you will, through a biblical Christian perspective. That's true. That's okay. correct. That's correct. Yeah, and I try to inform my thinking by by scripture. Take the humble approach. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and be teachable. That's great. Th that's 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 the key. I feel like too many people are really rooted in their beliefs and they're not open to the possibility that they're wrong. I mean, I always have the attitude, I could be wrong, mm -hmm. however I think right. this. And I'm going to hold to my assumptions until I see that they're inconsistent, you know, with other assumptions or, you know, or maybe there's so much evidence that I'm wrong that I have to, I have to change. But I haven't seen anything to, um, to, to convince me that the biblical worldview is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what faith is. It's trust. Mm -hmm. Trust in what God has shown you and what God has done in your life. It's not like a blind kind of belief. In Wait a second. Prove. So you're saying that faith is something that's based on logic, reason, and evidence? I think so, yeah. I think I, well, at least a biblical version of faith. Now I know in, in um, our common parlance, faith has become believing in what you can't prove or what there's no mm -hmm. evidence for. I hold to what the early church fathers called faith seeking understanding. Uh -huh. You know, I think faith is a kind of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now it may it may be that our knowledge is incomplete, but it bridges the gap between our uh, ignorance and, and our knowledge. So what would you say to somebody who says, oh no, 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 I, I, I can't be a Christian because I believe in science. Well, I mean, science is a, is a method of knowing, and Christianity, is, well, knowing about the natural world, mm -hmm. it, using, it's, it's very it's very specific, very narrow. It's a method of understanding the natural world using empirical means and um, using um, inductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's only going to give you a slice of reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're more than just just n nature. I mean, that's a Christian presupposition yeah, really that I bring to the table is that you're you're you know your soul, spirit, as well as a body. Science may be able to describe what's happening physically, but it and, and also that would be the genetic fallacy too, just to say how something happened evolutionarily to to fully explain everything. That's not. It, it can't. Just because it, you describe how something occurred doesn't mean why it's uh, tr true or right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't, that's and that's the um, naturalistic fallacy to try to get an ought from an is. Like, uh -huh. you, ought, you ought to love your wife, but you can't get that from an evolutionary story. That's true. Right? Because... So what do you think evolutionists think about Christians? Well, it, you know, usually most evolutionists in their publications um, they try not to attack Christianity directly. I mean, they'll just say, well, you can be a Christian and be an evolutionist. And, you know, they'll point to people that are theistic evolutionists. Okay, I'm to but I, I think the real hardcore um, naturalists, deep down inside, I think they have a lot of dis disdain for spiritual people. Because, I mean, their whole... I, I think of somebody like um, Daniel Dennett, who, who doesn't mince words. I mean, he thinks believing in God is idiotic. And he'll, he'll say so. But most the thing about most scientists, though, they're, they're just doing their one little corner of research, and they're not really thinking about big pictures. And this is what I've noticed. Most scientists are not philosophers. Mm -hmm. And so they don't really think about those things, those big questions that much. They're more interested in publishing papers uh, about their, you know, their area. And they assume somebody else has discovered whatever it is that's supporting their evolutionary worldview. But when you kind of look at it, there's, there's nobody has the certainty that they claim to have. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. That's <laughs> so, great. So anyway, that's... Awesome. Well, high five. Boom. See, I can go on and on.